Hi, my name is Sal Minio. I've got a secret. Well, let us starring Jerry Moore. Thank you very, very much, my friends, and many good evenings to you, and welcome on this cold, cold evening in New York City. Somewhat warmer than last night, but cold nevertheless. Welcome to I've Got a Secret. I would like you to meet our panel. Our panel begins with Bill Cullen, as always. Then back again, bless Bess, is Bess Meyerson. And then there is Henry Morgan. And home again, oh. Betsy Palmer. <laughs> That's our gal. Glad to have you all with us. Now then, panel, let us welcome our first contestant, please. Will you come in, sir? There you go. Arthur, nice to see you. Have a seat. Uh, will you tell the panel, please, what your name is and where you are from? I'm Dr. Coover, and I'm from Kingsport, Tennessee. This is Dr. Coover, C-O-O-V-E-R. He is from Kingsport, Tennessee. Dr. Coover... You seem to have a wire hanging down from the middle of the stage. So we have, Gary. Yeah, so we have. All right, now, Doctor, if you will whisper your secret to me, we will show it to our audience at home at the same time. <laughs> yeah, huh? Well, how, how are you going to do this, Doctor? Panel, Dr. Coover's secret concerns something that Dr. Coover thinks he's going to do. And Henry, we'll start with you. Well, Doctor, um, that wire is a cable, actually, and looks strong enough to lift someone. Is it going to lift someone? Yes. Uh, is it uh, <laughs> Gary, for example? Is it what? Is it Gary? Yes. Fine, let's get on with the... Uh, <laughs> We're going to do the Tom Dooley bit tonight. <laughs> Does, uh, is, is, is this hanging of Gary in the evening depend on anything that the panel says? No. Oh, then we can just go ahead and do it. <laughs> yeah, let's. Well, no, but just, just to keep the game moving, you have to ask questions anyhow. Oh, is there a good reason for hanging Gary... Uh, for... <laughs> for raising Gary? Yes, yes. Oh. Is this uh, because of, of something that he has done bad? No, no. Good? No. You couldn't get anybody else to do it? <laughs> <laughs> there are not too many people around with as few brains as I have. You know, not everybody would do this. All right, there is uh, $20 down and uh, $60 to go. We go to Betsy Palmer, please. Well, Dr. Coover, does it have anything to do with the two um, little cylinders that are on the table? Yes. It does. Um, do they have, um, some glass in them, like lens? No. In them? Are you going to hang Gary, oh, lift Gary up and put him over those two cylinders? No. 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 Will yeah. those cylinders have something to do with Gary while he is up above? Yes. Hanging? Yes. Um, will they do something to him physically? No. Will they light up? Will they what, Betsy? Well, I was going to say, will something happen to them, like will they light up for... We Get hope not. To you no, wait, no, if they light up, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> $40 down, $40 to go, and we go to Bill Cullen, please. Are they your, uh, do they contain your source of power to lift Gary? No. Uh, uh, do they unscrew, and do they each contain something? They look like they have... No. Neither one, they are solid? Are they solid? No, they're not completely solid. Would it help us to know what they're made of? No. We'll tell you, as a matter of fact, what are they made of? Made of steel. Steel. So their weight has nothing to do with no. it? No. At all? No. Well, you begin to get me then at that point. Oh, I see what they... These are... No, he couldn't... Pos are these things that have anything to do with uh, maybe lifting Gary up and putting him in orbit around the sun so we get the first, <laughs> the first man to orbit the sun? No. Woman? I'll be l lunatic instead of lunic or whatever we got there. Sixty dollars down, twenty dollars to go. We go to Bess Meyerson. Dr. Coover, will you be putting Gary into this box? No. That's good. I was worried about Gary. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, will you be wearing... Uh, do you have some kind of harness on you, Gary? Mm -hmm. No. Is it important for us to know how you're going to lift Gary? Yes. 
All right. Now, will you have to put something on over his suit? No. He will be lifted, dressed just as he is now? Yes. Oh, then there's something magic about that loop and cable. Uh-huh. Well, there goes our $80 panel, and this is really pretty unbelievable. This is going to be as exciting a thing as you... And when I say exciting, I mean scientifically exciting. Uh, Dr. Coover is a chemist with the Tennessee Eastman Company in Kingsport, Tennessee. And the wire that you see there is going to lift me up into the air about four or five feet. And Dr. Coover's secret is that the only thing between my 150 pounds and that wire will be one drop of glue. One drop of glue. I have trouble getting a postage stamp to stick on a letter. Now, how are you going to get these two cylinders to stick together, sir, with one drop of glue? How do you do that? Well, I take these two steel cylinders, yeah. which are non-magnetic, just ordinary steel. Yeah. They have been tapped in the end so I can put the uh, hook to hook it up there so we can hang on to this. <clears throat> then I'm going to place a single drop on this cylinder. This is the new discovery, this drop that you're seeing here. You've never seen such bonding power in your life. One drop, and not very large at that. Do you see that? All right. And I'll take this other cylinder, spread it around. And Dr. Coover, how long does it take for this stuff to start bonding or holding together? Well, actually, Gary, the bonding starts instantaneously. Mm -hmm. However, it does take some time before you realize a strong bond. What do you call a strong bond? How much will this eventually hold, this one drop? Well, for example, after about 30 minutes, this would be capable of supporting about 10,000 pounds. And after 24 hours, it would support something like 15,000 pounds. One drop of glue. Now, Doctor, you must be very proud of this. I imagine many years of research went into its discovery, huh? No, as a matter of fact, there wasn't, Gary. This discovery was purely by accident. <laughs> Bully for you. Well, how did you find it? As a matter of fact, we were looking for high-temperature plastics for use in jet aircraft. You mean by that something clear to make the airplane uh, airplane uh, canopy out of? Right? Yes, these canopies. That's and you, right. Well, how did you discover that this stuff had such great holding power? Well, while checking one of the chemicals uh, between two glass prisms, yeah. an expensive piece of equipment, it was sealed together permanently, of course, yeah. ruining the equipment. And oh, in other words, when you went to take the two pieces of glass apart, you found out you couldn't. Well, right? you couldn't take them apart. Oh, I see. And from this, we realized the discovery of Eastman 910 adhesive. This allows me to use what I think is my favorite word. The word that describes when you're, when you're looking for something, you know, when you're going for one object and you find something else. It's Serendipity. called Serendipity. Serendipity, yeah. which I think is a wonderful word. Yeah. You're trying for something, but you get something else. By mistake, you call it serendipity. All right, sir, now we have the two glued together, we hope. What do we put in here uh, that's going to hoist me up? Well, I have an eye here, which I'll screw in. All righty. This end. I've been watching the clock. We've had about a minute and 15 seconds so far for, this, uh, for these two, peop uh, two pieces to bond. Or bond means glued together. You know? One piece. Now we have a bar for you. Just for me to hang on to. I'm going to do a lot of bars. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, Bill, but I'm not going to ask you to repeat it. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Now we drop this through here. Now think of all the glues that you have known in your life, and think of this. These are two pieces of heavy steel. This is not, you know, paper. All right, gentlemen, let us pray. Here we go. Hold on. I'm on. Go. <laughs> oh. of glue. Now, this, if this breaks, uh, I, I didn't tell him I was going to ask him, but I have faith in this product. <laughs> uh, sir, will you hold on to it, please, on the other yeah. end? Let's see if you can do two of us. Yeah. Huh? All right. This is well over 300 pounds. And here we go. One drop of glue. Before we part, I would like to point out one thing. Now, we're going to get 8 million letters tomorrow from people saying, where can I buy this? I would like to have it for use in my home or one thing of the sort. What's the answer there? Well, actually, Gary, this material is very expensive and is only available for industrial uses and is not available to the home consumer. So, in other words, if you're interested, forget it. <laughs>
Don't bother the man about his glue. What do you call this, sir? Eastman 910 adhesive. Eastman 910 adhesive. Yes, Henry, you had a question. Yeah, this is sort of a dumb, uh, a semi-technical question, Doctor, which will show you that I shouldn't have brought it up. But if the two steel surfaces were absolutely flat, isn't it possible that they'd hold without the glue? Not that much, yes. I, I see the, your point, but uh, not, not the way to which we put on it. Uh -huh. They're not absolutely flat. They're not poly surfaces. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to move along, oh. friends. I'm sorry. I'd is like it to only steel, enough. though, that sticks it's together? It's only steel. Only steel. There are no tricks. Steel and glue and that's All it. kinds of material. Dr. Cooper, thank oh. you very, very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, then, somewhere I seem to have lost my cards offstage grand. Well, let the next contestant bring him in, and here he is. Will you tell us what your name is, sir, and where you're from? Yes. I'm Bill McIntyre from Navasota, Texas. From what's the name of the state, sir? Texas. He's so from Texas that he says it all in one word, Texas. <laughs> Texas. Now, Bill, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it to our audience at home at the same time. Panel Bill, Bill's secret concerns something that happened to him, and we will uh, start with uh, Henry, please. Bill, did it concern anyone else? Your secret? Yes. Is it somebody who is well known? No, sir. Somebody at home? Uh, wait a minute, we're getting, we're getting a little confused. Are you saying that it concerns somebody else? His secret, as stated, concerns him and a group. The group would be the somebody else, and the group is well known, Bill, right? Yes. Is it a. A large group like the Army. It's large, but it's not the Army. Yes. Okay. Are you yes and Gary or me? I'm just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're pleasant, I'll say that word. Is it a group as big as uh, what's next to the Army? The Marines? <laughs> That's smaller. Is it a federal, you know, a governmental group of any kind? Yes. All right, $20 down, $60 to go, and we go to Betsy Palmer, please. This is something that, that is going to happen to you? No, ma'am. It has happened to you? I'm waiting yes, questions. It has. Uh, does this have anything to do with any of the armed services? No. No, ma'am. No. But it has something to do with a federal? Yes, ma'am. A federal body? Do, well, is it something like... Um, Oh, maybe forestry? No, ma'am. Uh, school? No, ma'am. No, ma $40 down and $40 to go, and Bill Cullen is up. Should I try to find the Federal Service? <laughs> Might be helpful. Mailman? Uh, post office? Uh, no, sir. Under the, the uh, Department of uh, Interior or Commerce? No, sir. Uh, immigration? No, sir. Somewhere along the line, I think I misled you, panel, into thinking what? that this was a tremendously large group or a large body. It is not necessarily a large body. It is a body of people federal. who are formed under the federal government. Formed under the federal government. So that leaves out the Rangers. Uh, that's the state government. The FBI. Uh, militia. FBI. 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 No, that's, that's under the Department of Justice. That's, is it under the Department of Justice? No. $60 down, $20 to go. We go to best. Uh, is it a branch of the government? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Is it the federal government? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just have an idea, Gary. Bill, uh, would you uh, be connected with Congress in any way? Yes, ma'am. Oh. And since today was the opening day of, of Congress, are you a page? Yes, ma'am. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. This was his first day as a page, a page boy in the uh, Senate of the United States of America. Bill, how did it go? It was a pretty busy day uh, since it was the first day of session, first session. Uh, there was a lot of people there, especially the important ones, and everybody got lost, and there was a usual mix-up, but it was pretty busy. <laughs> on, the, on account of him, our taxes are going to go up next year. He got lost somewhere. <laughs> we have invited a somewhat more senior page boy to join us here who can tell us somewhat more about it. Here is Fritz Duke Zeller. Duke, will you come out, please? Well, how do you get to be a page boy? Well, you can get it any way you want, but I applied for the job just like you would any other job. Mm -hmm. I wrote to my senator and told him that I was interested, 
Next thing I knew, I got the appointment. How about you, uh, Bill? I worked with Senator Ralph Yarber in Texas this summer during his election, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to know him pretty well, so he appointed me this year. Now, let me ask you one thing. You fellas, being of school age, obviously, uh, did you have to quit school to take the job? No, sir. Uh, we go to school at 6.30 in the morning to the Library of Congress, mm -hmm. and uh, we go from 6.30 to 9.30, and we take the subjects almost like we had at home. So, yeah. 6.30 to 9.30, what time do you get out of bed? Oh, usually about quarter to six. <laughs> <laughs> that figures, that's the way it goes in our house. Young fellas, good luck to Thanks you. Thanks a lot. And a great future. Thanks. Thank sir. you so much. <laughs> now, panel, I'm going to have to ask you now to leave your desk, but do not leave the premises. Just back up against the backdrop because unbelievable activity is going to be taking place while the film commercial is on. So you'll have to wait. Friends, while you were gone, as you can see, we wheeled on four drum sets and we sat four amazed <coughs> panel members at these drum sets. You didn't see what's written on the front. No. Starting from here, it's called Cullen's Cool Cats, <laughs> Meyerson's Music Masters, oh, Morgan's Maniacs, <laughs> hit a stretch it a little here, Palmer's Pole Cats. <laughs> now then, the, the reason for the drums will be obvious to you after we meet our young guest for tonight. Here is an exceptionally talented young actor who won a nomination for the Academy Award for his part in Rebel Without a Cause. And he is, his latest movie is Walt Disney's Indian story, Tonka. So here is Sal Minio, Bellboy. <laughs> give the panel at least a hint as to why these drums are out here. So what is the name of your next picture? And this is a hint panel, so listen. Well, we're filming the life story of Gene Krupa. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, I understand that you've been taking drum lessons five hours a day, is that right? It's been pretty rough. You see, the, the most important thing to learn is coordination. Mm -hmm. You know, your right hand does one thing, etc. But to be able to talk while you're doing all of these things, this is what's taking so long. Now, most people think that you just sit down and drums and bang on them. Actually, any, any drummer, I don't care how good or bad he is, has to start with one beat on this foot, then he'll get another beat going here, chomp to tum chomp to tum chomp to tum then the other hand is going bop, 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 then he'll move over to the other foot. So actually, he's got four different beats going on at one time, and it's kind of like doing this, you know? Your head's gone like this. <laughs> <laughs> and to talk at the same time drives you a little nuts. So we're going to have a contest tonight to see which of you four has the most potential as a jazz drummer. Oh. So Sal, will you come over here, my friend? Take a seat. When you get seated, I'll ask you to whisper it to me, and we will show your ultimate secret to the folks at home. <laughs> now, panel, here's the way it works. Bill, we'll start with you. And Sal will give you a beat which you must imitate. Now, once you get this beat going, he will then, it'll be your turn to ask a question. But keep the beat going while you're asking. What's the first thing? A simple first you need a little gum, but we won't do that. We'll start with the bass drum. Simple. One, two, three. All right, Bill. One, two. All right, ask a question. Oh, um, <laughs> Sal, is this uh, going to lead to anything? It certainly is. That's fine. Oh, I got to do that. There. Sal, is this uh, thing that's going I can't hear you, Sal. <laughs> this thing that it's going to lead to, Sal, is it going to pay money? Will it pay money? Yeah. Ignay. No. Wait a minute, I got this one off here. Keep that one going, keep it going. Next question. Uh, Sal, are we all going to have to do this over here? Yeah. That's fine. That's foot to it. I guess, uh... Thank you very much. Well, we got a rough idea. That's about as rough as an idea can get. Now let's go to swinging Bess Myers. All righty. So oh, take a Wait, I didn't you hear lie. you. <laughs> Never mind. You, you know what? I didn't hear him either, but we'll do it again. <laughs> right. One, two, three, four. Just the bass drum. I can't even push it down. Wait a minute. <laughs> Ask a question. <laughs> Sal, do you like doing this thing? <laughs> I love it. You do? Good. Does it concern somebody else? Does it concern somebody else? Yes, definitely. A girl? A girl? You 
Get out with me. Listen to me. <laughs> Concerns a girl? Uh, well, it concerns you. Me? Well, ultimately, the girl does not appear in his secret, no. I see. I don't know what to do. Very good, huh, Beth? <laughs> now we go to Henry Morgan. Hot Lips Morgan. <laughs> Ask a question, Hank. <laughs> yeah? Uh, Sal. You're forgetting to drum. Um, ask a question. One, two, three, three four. One, two, three, four. Sal. Hey, you're pretty cute. Are you one of the three chipmunks? <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I must confess. I must confess. I forgot. Is this something eat. you're going to do, or is it something you? It's something he's doing right now. What's he doing? <laughs> going into business for himself over there. <laughs> let's, let's go to Palmer's Pole Cat. He's yeah. the prettiest drummer yet. Oh, thank you kindly. One, two, three, uh, Saul, has this got something to do with the Gene Krupa movie? Yes. No. Well, not a problem. No, no. movie itself. What, where really. did you do that, then? <laughs> it doesn't... I'm sparing. Are you going to do this this evening? Are we going to do this this evening? Yes. Are we all doing it together? Yes. We are? Um, are you teaching us how to play the drum? Chaos. Let's just Utter play. Chaos. Let's just I play. Tell you what, now you have a tendency, you have a tendency to want to play while the other ones play. Yes, right? right? Yeah. So I tell you what let's do now. Let's, now this, this is ad lib. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's all five of you just take the same basic beat and see if you can do it together. The same chump to bam, chump to bam. Now you start. Secret, oh my, over here, yeah. Sal, Sal Mimio's secret is that while you were drumming, you were being judged by one of the foremost drummers of all time, seated in our studio audience, Mr. Gene Krupa. Crazy. Gene <laughs> Krupa. Yes, man. Hi, Gene. How are you? Hey, Hi, good to see you. Nice Step over here, my friend. We were sitting in the control room before this show went on the air, Gene, listening to the Timex Jazz Show. Mm -hmm. It was a real screamer, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a pretty swinging thing. Yeah, everybody had a real great time. Swing. I understand that you were on leave of absence tonight from the London house in Chicago for this appearance. Right, right. When do you go back so the folks out there will know? As soon as we get through here. <laughs> oh, it's on the plane and go, huh? That's right. Good. Well, all right, now then, which one of these four magnificent people has the greatest potential as a jazz drummer? <laughs> yeah, if he takes one, he's in trouble. It can't be a girl. Yes, it has to be a girl. Why? He's no good. Well, Betsy. Right. What? Betsy? You? Betsy yeah. had the best beat? Yeah! yeah. Betsy, Betsy. Uh, she she kept playing while she talked, which is very difficult oh, to do. So now, what does she win as a result of this? Ah, as a result of this, you have a. I have my own drum. No, no. I never oh, had one. Wait a minute. You have a uh, a forty-five year uh, instruction course at the Gene Krupa Cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Seconds 
left. I know they want to hear you go. Get on, get on, Sal Skins, right. and just go until we're off. Huh? Here's the real master now. Just, just, just keep going until we're off. All right. We'll see you next week. Just go, Gene. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Cartman production. This is John Cannon speaking.